to Newham College in the heart of East London. Today our Olympic interview is with Tessa Sanderson, arguably this country's greatest ever Olympian. Tessa, Hello. tell me what uh, London 2012 means to you. London 2012 means an awful lot to me. I've done six Olympic Games. I know what it would do to regenerate the whole area of where the Games has been held in Newham, um, because it's one of the poorest boroughs in, you know, in, in London, in the UK, more or less. And um, it's going to mean world-class facilities, fantastic facilities that uh, we need to have um, in this country to house um, every other sport outside of football. It means that uh, for the first time there will be a gathering of sportsmen that's just absolutely spectacular. And, you know, by far the, the last Olympic Games was 1948. And we've never had such a gathering. And it, it's just going to be fantastic. When you have an Olympic Games, it just gives a total different perspective on, every, on, on sport. Because it doesn't matter about colour, about creed, about, you know... It, it, it's lovely when people are running and, and sort of, you know, doing world records and things like that. But the, the participation and actually going into a stadium like we, we do have and um, or an Olympic stadium to just watch all this come together. It's it, it's it's going to be heart rending. It's, it's a great thing. You talked about young people. I mean, that surely their involvement. And the legacy factor, surely those have got to be the most important aspects. It's one of the very, very most important aspects of, of, of the Olympic Games because um, everybody wants to sort of compete and do well. But for youngsters trying to achieve and get to, you know, that goal and just that feel of even, you know, just, just competing in the Games. To so them, it's not about sort of winning, really. It's about taking part. And what I'm doing at the moment, yes, I'm working with a lot of youngsters to try and achieve that, but also it's not just for 2012. It's for the absolute legacy of, of, of the sport that I'm looking at. But, but the Olympics is about young people striving to get in there, represent your country, because when you're out there competing in any other championships or any other competitions, it's nice, it's fun. But the Olympics is the pinnacle of it all. It's right up here. I mean, I'll never forget when tennis was introduced oh, a couple of Olympics ago. And um, I was sitting, having a coffee with um, Goran Ivanisevic. Get tongue around that. And I said, yeah, why are you guys here? You've got it all. You've got loads of dough. You've won all that you had to do in Wimbledon and all that. Why are you here? I would like to win an Olympic gold medal. That did it for me because I thought, you know, you're not just sort of imposing on our territory, but you want our medal and all. But the thing is, that's what it's about. Having that coveted medal, for some people, it's great. But for the youngsters, it's a great aspiration. It's a great inspiration. It sort of puts their minds in a different frame to think, oh, I can do this. Not just to compete, but to look at other aspects of life. You know, it, 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 it's such a different, different feeling. I'm going to take you back a little bit. Where were you, can you remember where you were, when the announcement was, Don't go was there made, now. <laughs> uh, when London won the bid to host the 20 Actually, the way, I didn't go to Singapore to hear the results, although I had been working on the bid from day one, actually. But I didn't go to Singapore, really, because you'll never guess what I was doing. Whilst they were out in Singapore, um, I was away on doing a PA on a boat, a ship, and because we all have to work, and... But I came back two days, actually, before the announcement. And so I was in Stratford, Stratford Park. and Which is um, quite significant. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember standing there in the middle of everybody and, and you just listening and waiting and Rogue stood up and when the words started to come out of his mouth, he said, he said um, the next Olympic Games or something like that is going to be awarded to. And you stood there and you're going, you know. And when he said... Um, England, I think it was England or GB, I kind of remember now. It was like, oh my God, it's actually coming. Yeah, it's actually happening. Get away, the biggest sporting event is coming here to London. Oh yes, that's right, so it's awarded to London. And oh God, everybody just went berserk. It was like, I don't know what it's like to be in a beehive, but it was like just a buzz around you. And then people started picking me up and saying, well done, well done. And I think, okay, I did my little bit. <laughs> and then they started holding me on their shoulders. And, you know, the feeling, the reality started coming home. My God, the Olympic Games is coming to London. That's spectacular. Let me take you back a little bit further then to your own Olympic Games. You've done six of them. Yeah. 
some of your favourite or one of your favourite Olympic memories? You know, I'd be really biased if I said it wasn't 1984 when I won my gold medal. But I have to say, for me, um, not just because I won the gold medal, because there were so many special things about that Games. I mean, for the first time, I got a chance to sort of line a Richard and all them little doing their thing. Oh, mm. no, long scene in the stadium. <laughs> and um, Ali did um, yeah. the run, the relay yeah, baton. Torch, that was the torch, first torch, time yeah. the torch run had ever yeah. been done. And it was spectacular to see those people that I'd looked up to because he was one of my, you know, iconic person. And also, um, you know, Daley Thompson won his gold in, 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 in that same Games. But that was spectacular for me in LA because that's when all the razzmatazz of what I've always sort of dreamed of an Olympic Games would be like. There was a lot of fun. I went to Universal Studios for the first time. We had a day out in the village. It was the first time I'd seen one of these sort of like, um, they had this big screen there in just in the village that you could actually go and relax and sit and watch telly outside and the grass verge. There was all these different little elements that they brought in to make you feel extra special. And that the games felt extra special. Mm. And so, you know, and then when I won my gold medal, I think it was a feeling that I will never, ever forget. Because even as soon as my last javelin let that loose, it was like, oh my God, what do I do now? And I thought, I'll do like everybody else did. And I ran around the stadium. <laughs> and, did you grab a flag as well? Uh, no, no? I, no, someone gave me a flag <laughs> as I ran around and they, they wrapped it around me and I sort of ran around with that and I got to the top and I remember that Carl Lewis was about to jump and someone was saying, stop, 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 trying to push me back. And I said, well, he never stopped for me and I darted around the other side as well. And, you know, it was just great. And then when the medal podium came and to stand on that podium and everybody was... You know, just start to sing God Save the Queen before I'd even, you know, stood on there. I'd realised you really have done something special. And when the person who gave me my medal said, you've done yourself proud, you've done your country proud, I, 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 mean, I, I couldn't get my words out. I'm like, thank you. I, 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 it was just, it's just something so, so different. You know, it's unbelievable. Coming back to 2012, obviously... Whenever there's a major championship, whether it be a World Cup football or an Olympic Games, there's a lot of cynicism beforehand, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what type of world class... Do you think London is capable of delivering a world class Games, as has been promised? Yeah. I, I, I definitely do think so, because um, track and field is the main thing. In, uh, for me, I think, the, in, in the Olympic Games. It's, it's the biggest sport. Um, you only have to look at Usain. Usain won, you know, it's three gold. He ran almost faster than lightning. And that is keeping a lot of people to come back to this Games and want to see more and, and all of that happening. You know, he'll be coming to the Games. Jamaica has a fantastic team, unbelievable um, track and field team. Um, the US is a great team. Britain has been brilliant in the past with their track and field team. We're a little bit down now because, you know, performance has well, it's waned a little bit, but hopefully they'll get back better. But um, we do have other world-class things going on. Rowing, all this is, you know, those sort of things that we've been cycling. We did exceptionally well in the last games. And I think we will deliver. I think, um, yes, there are a lot of cynicism. Then a lot of promises have been made. People moan about sort of there's so much money that's involved with the stadium. And, you know, people are going to be sort of like paying a lot of tax to make sure this and that gets done. But once the games have started, a lot of that would have forgotten. But I do think that we have the people, we have the man power to deliver a games like that. And I think we have the expertise to deliver it. I think what does creep in now and then is the politics of some things sometimes. And it, it, it really gets on your nerves because a lot of people who make decisions about things sometimes who are in politics have never actually been in the arena and competed as such, and they tend to make all these, you know, decisions that we as sportsmen probably know better. But you have to ride with it because, you know, they make the decisions. 